KQ Morning Show on 92 KQRS. Hi, this is Ken Thomas from WJJY in Brainerd, and I'm making a cash call right now. Do you have any idea what our cash call jackpot is? Uh, no, I'm sorry I don't. Oh, would you care to take a guess at it? Your test call. It's a cash call. Oh, cost call? No, that's cash call. Oh, well... Well, there's, we have a certain amount of money in the jackpot, and if you guess the correct amount, then you win that amount. Well, uh, cutting wood. <laughs> That's what I was doing. <laughs> you don't want to take a guess at it, then? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> uh, let's see now. Uh, uh, gee, I, I uh, well, uh, just one word, or... Or, uh... No, it would be a dollar amount. Oh, I see. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, $17. How's that? Well, that's not quite right. Yeah. We had $463 in the jackpot. Oh, yeah. Would have liked to have given that to you. Well, that would have been pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, uh, Mr. Shaffel, thanks for being so nice anyway, and you yeah, have a good day, okay? I was outside uh, cutting wood. I heard the phone ring, and so I run. Oh, okay. okay. And nobody else in. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you, then. Yeah, thank you, too. Bye-bye. Hello? Hello, is this the Eno Corpy residence? Yeah. Is this the Corpy residence? Yes. Hi, this is Ken Thomas at WJJY Radio in Brainerd, and we're playing Cash Call. Do you, uh, do you know our current cash call amount? Huh? Do you know what our current cash call dollar amount is? <laughs> Who is this? Oh, uh, you're not familiar with our program at all, are you? <laughs> no. Okay, well, I'll tell you what we've got here. This is a radio station in Brainerd, Minnesota, calling you. Oh. And we've got a jackpot where there's a dollar amount in the jackpot. And if you can guess the correct amounts, we'll give you that money. Oh. Now, I know you maybe haven't been listening. Maybe you'd like to just take a wild guess at it. <laughs> yeah, I've been to Fargo to the hospital. Oh, I see. Just got home last evening. Oh, well, I hope you're okay. Yeah, I'm okay. That's good. Yeah. Did you want to take a guess at our total or not? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and take a guess. Yeah. Anybody can come. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, uh, I'm sorry I disturbed you this morning. Huh? I said, uh, I'm sorry I disturbed you this morning. I yeah, hope you're I'm feeling okay. better. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks for talking. Yeah. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Hello. Hello, is this the Ernest Toluca residence? Yes. Hi, this is Ken Thomas at WJJY Radio in Brainerd, and we're playing Cash Call. Are you familiar with our contest? <laughs> well, I'm kind of, this is Grandma, I'm kind of hard hearing. Would you talk slower, please? Okay, uh, this is Ken Thomas at WJJY Radio in Brainerd, and we have a contest we call Cash Call. A, a chess call? A cash Call. Huh? <laughs> it's called Cash Call. <laughs> oh, well, Ernie's not home right now. Ernie's not there right and now. And neither of them. This is just Grandma here alone. Oh, I see. Uh-huh. Okay. Could you call again sometime? We'll try back some other time. Okay. Okay. Hi, this is Ken Thomas at WJJY Radio in Brainerd, Minnesota. We're playing Cash Call. Are you familiar with our contest? No, I ain't. Okay, we have a certain amount of money in the jackpot, and if you can guess the correct total, you'll win that amount. Make a guess. But they're a choppers. Pardon me? They're a choppers. A pair of choppers? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's not it. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This is Ken Thomas calling from WJJY. We're playing a game we call Cash Call. Are you familiar with our contest? I'm not interested. You're not interested? No. What if I told you you can guess at a dollar amount, and if you hit the money, you win money just like that, and it doesn't cost you anything? You're gay. Pardon me? Are you gay? <laughs> no. Sorry. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> All right. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. There you go. It is Friday. 
And it's not just any Friday. It's a very special Friday. So let's wait no longer. It's time for your top five at six. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to mention it's Kick You Up North. Yeah, We're at Craig's Resort on Gull Lake. We're in the 30s. It's, it is in the 30s. That's Holy warming up your truck weather out there. I've already morning. seen more deer and more stars yeah. than I have in the, the whole rest of the year up to today. So so I'm out. That's good. I've seen enough. I'm yeah, done. Those, those deer are running around like no one's shooting at them yet. Oh, it was and fantastic. Not, yeah. uh, one of them almost got run over because I was like, hey, <laughs> is it, where's that turn? And I looked up and there he was looking right at me. Get There's some in like the window tonight. right now. Are they? <laughs> <laughs> so make people look. Oh, I think that's Ed out there pissing. <laughs> oh, God bless Ed. Everyone always says, is that a deer? No, it's just Ed. Ed. Oh, Number four in your top five and six. Okay, the Ohio State Buckeyes, or as they are called in the Ooh. Gorman House, the Ohio State Suckeyes. <laughs> um, the, the stadium, the Horseshoe in Columbus, there's a new vending machine that just opened. It will be in, in service tomorrow. It's a bacon vending machine. Wait a minute. You walk right up. You got a beer in one hand, you put your yeah. card in, and then boom, you get a few slices of bacon. Right? All right, I'll give the suck guys uh, attaboy for that one. That's first, a good one. That's uh, When are we getting one at uh, 2000 Southeast Elm Street? That's what first, I want to know. First time in my life I've ever talked about the Ohio State Buckeyes without a little mild and rolling nausea. <laughs> they have a bacon vending machine. I, I got it. Yeah, full credit due. Gotta Does give it, it come out them. in a cup? Uh, it dispense? comes out raw. Yeah. Actually, actually, that when you put your hand in there, there's a hand comes out and holds the bacon out. <laughs> oh, there's, there's a dude in there. <laughs> I want one in the house now. Uh, number three on your top five and six. Uh, the new Merriam-Webster Dictionary has added 200 new words and terms this year, um, including, these are now in the dictionary, right. touch grass is a new term. <laughs> What's that mean? Touch, that, I mean, that, touch grass means just participate in normal activities in mm. the real world. Now, you know, what, what, it means this. Shut your stuff. Turn your phone off. Uh, go have a life. You know, Touch I, grass. I prefer smoke grass. <laughs> and then I just don't participate. Yeah, also, smoke grass, turn on PS5. <laughs> also in the, the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, uh, Brian Zepp, Nepo Baby. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, man. He, he, we, we all know Zepp's only here yeah. through family connections. My dad, uh, my dad, his connection was getting me a construction job. I would have been, yeah, I don't know, yeah. using a cane now, but no. Uh, what Nepo else do we baby. have? Creepy Crawly, a slang term for bugs, is <laughs> actually in the dictionary yeah. now. Right. And then happening. finally, the British term for making out, Snog, S N O G. Oh, they have shag. See, I, shag. Uh, I, that's see, going all the way though. That's home plate. That's that's that's. The, see, the term shag always made sense to me. Oh, you like shag? Yeah, yeah I, I get that. Snog. Snog. I know. It sounds like. Would you want to smell my fart? That's what I think. <laughs> that's, that's not it at all. That's not it at all. It's actually just making out. Yeah, you can't use that with American women. They're not going for snog. You got to sweet talk them a little bit. They're like you want to mash. <laughs> <laughs> Number two on your top five and six, Mickey's Diner in St. Paul is yeah. reopening. Oh, How about yes. that? Yes, I like it. I, yeah. I'm really happy because every time I drive by that thing, I go, well, what happened here? It looks awesome. I've never yes. been. I can't wait now. It's been closed since uh, sometime during the pandemic. And now yeah. uh, 80 years strong, 36 seats ready to have people in them eating. 80 years and that griddle hasn't mm. been cleaned one time. That's, <laughs> That's Pure flavor. Last, Last time I was be. there, at like 2 a.m., a guy walked by and grabbed a fistful of my fries and walked away. <laughs> yeah. well, I, That's Mickey's. My kind of place. Yeah, I price. used to shoot pool at a pool hall, and the, and they used to, the guy used to say, we opened in 1947. We, we, we hadn't swept up yet, and that was the <laughs> truth. It was nasty. Finally, number one on your top five and six, the Minnesota Vikings are in London. They're, yeah. they're not snogging. They're, uh, well, hell, yeah, maybe yeah. they are. I don't know. Team bo- well. bonding. Who knows? Uh, but they got the New York Jets on Sunday early morning. We'll be waking up at Craigans, putting on the football. Um, right yeah. now, the Vikings are a two point favorite. Um, not that I would advise or suggest we all wager money on sports, but boy, I like the over 40 points. I think the teams yeah. will combine, even though they are of good defenses, especially yeah. Minnesota. I like that over. I think Minnesota is going to, uh, going to kind of boat race this New York Jets team. I'm not buying into the Jets at all. No, I know, but I, I think Aaron Rodgers, you know, is going to, I mean, he's just still maybe good enough to come back with a chip on his shoulder and, uh, he's pissed at his coach and life and the universe and yeah. he hasn't had any uh, high watch in a while, a good sweat tent experience. He might bring it. And Sam Darnold going back to play against the Jets no, it's anywhere. Great. It's great. Yeah, I, I think the quarterbacks put up some points. I look very forward to it. 
As the uh, oh, oh, uh, the troublemakers dun, continue dun, to file dun, in, Reagan's <laughs> um, nice. There's your top five at six. I do want to say a uh, happy Fat Bear Week, everyone. Happy oh. Fat Bear. Well, to everyone except for that fat bear that ate that other bear. Hang tight. <laughs> Connect with us on the KQ Talking Text Line six five one nine eight nine rock. That's six five one nine eight nine rock ninety two KQRS. KQ Morning Show live from Craigan. Right. Nice job. Well wow. done, Rock and Rana. Very well done. Rock. Yeah, well, Rock and Rana already with my favorite story of the morning, and it's going to, I'm sure, be try and beat this story right here. Our beloved Blondie, we'll see her uh, on the floor later, and then um, uh, as somersaulting across the floor when I kick her ass in leg wrestling uh, for the belt at 8 o'clock. But um, uh, Blondie gets up this morning and makes some coffee. Instead of using water in the coffee maker, she used vodka. Hmm. Wow. Ever tried that old home wow. remedy? Wow. Yeah, I yeah nice. that one up. Turns, uh, turns out, I guess it just basically boils it down to rubbing alcohol, caffeinated rubbing alcohol. Right. What could possibly go wrong? It's great for the esophagus. <laughs> great for the Mr. Coffee machine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, like Joe DiMaggio didn't have a belt with his coffee on occasion. <laughs> yeah, Come right. On. Yeah. Speaking of Mr. Coffee, we just heard uh, Billy Idol, uh, White Wedding. Billy Idol will be paying tribute. He'll be one of the people in helping Ozzy Osbourne into the Hall of Fame in October. Listen to the line. This is who will be on stage celebrating Ozzy Osbourne. Oswald, as I like to call him. Uh, Billy Idol. Uh, uh, Maynard James Keenan from Tool. Jelly Roll. Huh. Jelly Roll. He's Jack everywhere. Black. Get rid of him. Jack Black uh, will be actually giving the speech. And Ozzy Osbourne said, he's the only Hollywood actor who really is a rocker. Yeah. That's high praise. I mean, yeah. if I'm Jack Black, I'm feeling pretty good about myself today. I mean, Keanu Reeves is feeling a little butt hurt. I think he's actually got a man, could be, but, could be. Know, I mean. um, And I also did. I also noticed that. Um, what's the? Uh, what's the, the? The she won the first American Idol. Has the talk show. Kelly Clarkson. Kelly Clarkson, Kelly Clarkson will be uh, part Kelly, of the Kelly. foreigner induction. I'm, oh, not, I'm not making that up. I don't know why. Yeah, that's eh. weird. She's but, a super uh, fan. What? She, you know what? She, she's got I that. feel like some people passed on that one and they got to <laughs> Kelly Clarkson. Why? Kelly Clarkson? All right. Mm-hmm. I'm sure she'll do a fine job. I met a foreigner once. He was nice. Oh, the band. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anchorage, Alaska. A little something going on this week. It's known as Fat Bear Week. This is not a euphemism. This is literally brown bears yeah. in Alaska's Katmai National Park and Preserve. They have a thing every year where people uh, pay attention. All these bears are on. Uh, they have the cameras set up. You can watch them throughout the season. But they have a thing called the Fat Bear uh, Fat Bear Week. It's yeah. a it, the, this, the idea is that they celebrate the resiliency of brown bears. Um, and the bears at this point of the year, they're just eating salmon like there's no tomorrow. Like, yeah. like you know, like we, like it's like a bag of M&Ms with, you know, they're just going and going and going. Packing on the fat. We call it the state fair. Yeah. That's they a, call that's, it fat bear That's week. what that is. And All so right. they're just celebrating the bizarre nature of these bears. Um, the voting uh, was delayed this week, however, because uh, one of the fat bears, let me get this right. Oh, he ate another bear. Oops. <laughs> and it was captured on the webcam. So oh, a bunch of people man. were logged in on the website to see which bear they're going to vote for. Yeah. And apparently several thousand people watched two bears uh, basically try to they, kill each other. There's oh, nature right there. there one of them happening. won the fight. You and I was just yeah. thinking to myself, what, what if, like... What if Kobayashi and that guy, what if during the hot dog eating contest, they turned on each other? <laughs> um, I would watch. I, you, would, I mean, yeah, my would God, you? it would break television ratings. It's the it's the evolution of it. I think we'll get there someday. It's got to happen you sooner know? or later. <laughs> when, when, like, when Ow My Nuts is the number one TV show, like an idiocracy, <laughs> uh, we'll, uh, we'll have them turning on each other. You know what I like about this? Um, salmon got to be hard to catch. I mean, they're just slippery, slimy, yeah. and you got to be knee deep in that ice cold water, belly deep for the bears yeah. in that ice cold water. I like this bear. He's like, why don't you go catch all the fish and then I'll just eat you? Yeah, that's yeah. good thinking. Yeah, that's my um, kind of bear right there. They Well, you know, there's a reason bears are, are still around and it's just that sort of evolutionary progression. You yeah. Know, like the, 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 these are not, these are not dumb animals. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about um, any kind of competitive eating contest. We had a competitive eater on the show last year. Yeah. Guy walked in the studio, big as a trailer, and he had just done 
uh, the day before he ate like a 48 inch pizza like right. this, like mm-hmm. two of these tables and and we talked with him for a little while and then I looked at his Facebook page and I saw some competitions and there was one where he had a he literally had a plate of hamburgers that was it was like 72 cheeseburgers <laughs> and I just thought to myself if somebody from the place was like making an adjustment I mean he'd get a finger in there get a little <laughs> get some dill relish on there and he would go and it just led to this Take whole idea the knuckle yeah so now with the fat bear competition just I mean I don't know what do you call it fat dude competition yeah, fat, well, yeah. fat guy I, but I just want basically this is what I'm getting at and it's going to sound a little weird especially this early morning I just want to see people trying to eat each other I just, <laughs> All right. I'm ready for it in a loving way in a very loving way no it's very true oh wait they have websites for that never mind <laughs> I'm sorry I was, I was it was one of my brilliant ideas but I realized someone beat me to it connect with us on the KQ talking text line 651-989-ROCK That's 651-989-ROCK 92 KQRS It is October the 4th on this day in 1873 That's a long time ago The Toronto Argonauts Football Club was formed This is the oldest pro sports team in America that still uses its original name What is an Argonaut? It's it's a guy who plays ugly football Yeah, I, <laughs> Canadian football I mean Everyone's in motion before the snap. There's a 55-yard line for crying out loud. The end zone's a <laughs> half a mile long. I, when I watch Canadian football, it's like when I chew aluminum foil. Yeah. It's like, ah, yeah. Sorry. ah, everything about it makes Sorry. me nuts. Those end zones are so deep. It's, it's like, yeah, I mean, it's like they can run a, a, a post route, a 30-yard no, post route just in the end zone no, on the one-yard line. It's the only time you ever hear about a red zone bomb. <laughs> yeah, right. It's really unsettling. And I, and, I, you know, God bless the Canadians. They're trying, but... Man, can you imagine a, a quicker day trip than the Canadian Football Hall of Fame? <laughs> <laughs> you don't even have to get no. out of your car. No, it's a no, no. Through. You just, you just. It's a drive-through. Just a plaque on the side of the yeah, road. It's a, dri- like, it's a, a drive-through. Pull out they, one of those turnout. It's deals. a drive-through, and they hand you a moose head on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> on this day in 1969, for the first time, Major League Baseball had a set of playoff rounds before the World Series for the first ever. American League Championship Series, and who appeared but the Minnesota Twins? Yes, <laughs> yes, remember they, that? They were uh, <clears throat> they were swept. But hey, listen, yeah. you were there. That's what matters. Is that the freaking Yankees? I wait on that. Was the Baltimore Orioles? Oh, uh, say the O's, and the O's. But uh, but hey, at least the Twins made it. You know that was exciting. <laughs> that, that was mo- a good thing. Yeah, that's uh, put it on the state flag. At least the Twins made it. At least the Vikings <laughs> made it. Five years ago on this day, 2019, the number one album on the charts in the UK and the US was the Beatles' Abbey Road, 50 years after its release. Now, look, I love the Beatles, but even when when that happened, even I was going, yeah, but if music now didn't all suck, we wouldn't have to have 50-year-old albums on top of the charts. Just saying. On this day, two years ago, Loretta Lynn died. She was 90 years old. She was the first woman to ever be named Country Music Artist Entertainer of the Year. Loretta Lynn's uh, movie, Coal Miner's Daughter, if for no other reason, because the great Levon Helm appears, yes, it's always worth the rewatch. Yes, sir. Uh, and I went to see that movie. I was dragged to it by a girl I was dating at the time, and I hate country music, and I walked out of there going, this is the greatest movie I've ever seen. I don't like Loretta Lynn. God, even I like the movie. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, on this day in 1990, I was at the Forum in Montreal. My band was opening for Robert Plant at the Forum, the House of Hockey. It was yeah. pretty cool, you know? And there was an usher strike going on. <laughs> the Quebecois, they really are like the French. They're Quebec just on strike Quebec. all the time. All right. uh, so so what this means is you have the arena, and on the floor, you know, the, where the ice would be, there's chairs, rows, aisles of chairs, but there's no ushers. So what do the kids do? They immediately start stacking them. <laughs> just like, you know, stackable chairs. Sorry. And they were going like 25, 30 chairs high and then climbing to the top. Yeah. And I just remember... It's the weirdest thing ever. On stage, looking out at all these chair towers and one after another just falling. <laughs> and people just not standing up. And nobody catching anyone. And, uh, and they they're, they're literally were medics. There was a, you know, a dozen people hospitalized. It was great. It sounds like your set was inspirational. It, it, we, they loved us so much, they climbed to their death. <laughs> on this day in 1980, the number one song in America was Another One Bites the Dust by Queen. Uh, written by, of all people, the bassist. You know, I'm sorry, it's the bassist. But, you know, John Deacon, if your name's not Paul McCartney, I don't yeah. want to hear your songs. John Deacon in the studio with the band, and he goes down the hall, 
Mm-hmm. And the band uh, uh, Chic is in, you know, Good Le Times, Freak. you know, sure. Le Freak yeah. Chic. They're in, they're in one of the other studios recording, and he's listening every day. And they're just grooving, and it's funky as all get out. And he's just like, oh, my God, could you do that? I, I've got a bass line here. And he goes in. He puts the whole song down for the most part himself. Freddie comes in, hears it. He goes, oh, I'll write some lyrics. The next day, it's done. Yeah. I, you know, back off, John Deacon. They've already got Freddie Mercury and Brian May. Now the bassist is writing these songs. Uh, I find it hard to believe that a white musician was influenced by black musicians. This must have been the first and only time that, that was it. Happened. That yeah. was it. On this day in 1978, huh. speaking of great country singers, Tammy Wynette. Listen to this. She was abducted and held in her car at gunpoint for two hours by a guy wearing a ski mask. He just drove around Nashville, Tennessee for two hours with Tammy Wynette in his car. I never heard Tied this. up. Yeah, this is. I'm not making this up. Um, they drove 90 miles, ultimately. She was later released, and her kidnapper escaped. This is a yeah. Bizarre, yeah? I mean, like, uh, never to be found? As far as I know. Um, but it reminds me, and, and again, this maybe is too much uh, personal information, but yesterday on the drive to Brainerd, I don't need to give you too much more context, but I did hear myself say to my wife, hey, I wonder if a famous person's ever been killed by a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're in the car for a few hours. You get some weird thoughts. That's all I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> on this day in 1975, Pink Floyd had the number one album in the world with Wish You Were Here. Uh, the tribute to their ex-band member Sid Barrett, Shine On You Crazy Diamond, uh, Pink Floyd, as uh, as we talked about yesterday, s- just sold their catalog for four hundred million dollars. Yeah, and um, and I just I just can't I still can't get over the fact they just made more money than all of us will ever make in a hundred lifetimes just to a, just to never have to talk to each other again. <laughs> what a what a deal that is. <laughs> on this day, nineteen seventy seven, Janis Joplin was found dead at the Landmark Hotel in Hollywood. A uh, uh, heroin overdose, of course. Janice, uh, you know, if 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 I think at the time was at fifty four years now. Um, yeah. I don't think anybody at that time would have been surprised if you had said, "Oh, they'll still be playing her records in fifty four years." Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, I, you know, you think about great rock singers. I still put her on the very short list. Fifty four years gone. That's that's not right. On this day in nineteen sixty eight, for the first time ever, a band called the New Yardbirds played a UK t- date in Newcastle. The New Yardbirds were actually Led Zeppelin. There were some gigs that the Yardbirds had booked, but then they broke up, and Jimmy Page had to fill the contractual obligation. But all this to say, the first gig for Led Zeppelin, those four guys in England, was on this day. That makes it a high holy day in my world. Oh, hell, yeah, you know? right, exactly. That's like a, some sort of Christmas-like holiday, you know? Uh, and then finally, like rock and roll Messiah boy. finally, 1961 on this day, New York's Carnegie Hall, not the big room, but there's a little room there called Chapter Hall. Bob Dylan performed for the first time. There were 53 people there. Tickets were $2 each. <laughs> Man. And uh, that was his first New York gig outside of a Greenwich Village coffee house. Yeah. Uh, and he went up and, uh, and a couple people there saw him. And then the word started spreading. And before you know it, he had a record deal. And everybody in Minnesota could then say, oh, by the way, Bob Dylan's from here. Yeah. Not, we'll claim him now. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's a pretty good idea. There's your history lesson for the day. Ah, you know, we got hockey right around the corner. The Minnesota Wild. Yeah. Home opener Thursday, as in this coming Thursday, against Columbus. And we've got some tickets we want to give away. Hell yeah. I think we're going to play the first of, what, 36 games today. <laughs> yeah, let's get it going. It's going to be good. Hang tight. It's the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. You're listening to the KQ Morning Show. Steve, Zepp, Tony, and Ryder on 92 KQRS. I'm Steve from Brainerd. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Are we about to go ice fishing? Because you're giving me a tip up. Yeah. <laughs> it's the KQ Morning Show live from Craigens. Yes, it is. Wow. Who said James Earl Jones is dead? My Man. gosh, there he is. <laughs> well, my for, father. For today, anyway, I am also Steve from Brainerd. And uh, nice job there, brother. Nice. Congratulations on that tip up. KQ Morning Show at Craigens on Gull Lake. It is a beautiful Friday morning. The sun is coming up, and Zepp and I are really questioning some life decisions we've made as of late. That, that's By the way, you, you get to see us during the commercial breaks when you're all up here, and you're like, yeah. I wonder what they're talking about. Yeah, indigestion, yeah, stuff mostly. like that. Normal Bad, stuff. Just, my, 
My back hurts a little. Anybody got a Dr. Scholl's corn thing? Because my <laughs> pinky toe, I, I need some help over there. You know what we need? We need a little uh, uh, caffeinated vodka coffee this morning. That's what we need. <laughs> That's what we need. Most, <laughs> most definitely. We also need to give away some hockey tickets. Oh, good news. We've got a few. The Minnesota Wild open up Thursday night versus Columbus at the XL Energy Center. And we thought we should play a game and give away a couple of tickets. And oh my gosh, look, here's two people holding microphones. What the? So let's get to it do we have a do we have a specific thing do we have a little intro to the game there it is how about that very sophisticated yes we're up north you know up north is an area a state of mind and a lifestyle with its own charm and eccentricities of course yeah we're going to present people, places, and things, and you tell us, do they have ties to here in the Northland or not? Ope or nope? Yeah. When in doubt, Let's open play. out. Remember that. I'm excited about uh, uh, Ope or nope. I'm also, you know what? I'm just going to say it. How about Tony Lee right here? Let's hear oh, it. Yeah. Oh, you. Yeah. No, sit down. Oh, please don't stand Look up. Him. Look at him. Again. Isn't he, isn't he a gem? Oh, yeah. please. He's just the, the, crown, the crown jewel of the KQ oh, Morning Show. S- Stop All right, we cuddling. got we have we have two contestants ready to play Ope or Nope. Yeah. Uh, please, please introduce yourselves. And you are, oh no, ladies first. Yeah. Come on. My name is Dawn. I'm in, I'm from West Saint Paul. Is Dawn. that mic on? Is there a mic on? We may not. We may have a mic problem. Oh, for cripe's sake! Oh, that microphone is not from working. here. Oop. Uh oh. Let's try it again. Let's see what we got. Give her a little tap there. Dun, 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 dun. It's just more. They can share a mic too. Well, they can share a mic. Done. Yeah, we got an engineer on it. How's yours working there, young lad? Yeah, I think I'm good. Oh, Dougie's right, you good. Can go Let's try share. it again. Yeah. I'm Don from West St. Paul. Oh, there, no. Don, use mine. Dude. All right. <laughs> For the third and final time, your name, please. Hi, my name is Don, and I'm from West St. Paul. Yes. Yeah, there Dawn. you go, Don. We just we just knew you'd project more if you got angry at us. So uh, or if I used his like yeah. Farrah Fawcett, ladies and gentlemen, very foxy hair. <laughs> Thank wow. you. Yeah, uh, I said he was I a try gem. Hard. <laughs> All right. All right, Don, let's see what we got here. Tony, we're going to go back and forth, I imagine. What do you think, Ryder? Should we go back and forth and do one at a time? Yeah, we're going to go back and forth between you two fine contestants. And uh, and Doug, sir, you're from. Red Wing. Red Wing. There you go. All right. Don and Doug, let's do it. Okay, let's go with Ope or Nope. Let's start out. Uh, Don, your first question. Ope or Nope. Olympian gymnast Suni Lee. Ope or Nope. Ope. <laughs> Very good. Yes. St. Paul represent. Another one of those Lee gems. Is she your niece? Yeah, she is. Yeah, thought so. Yes. All right, Doug, let's do it. Okay, I'm ready. Doggy number two, an outrageous Mardi Gras bra, an outrageous Mardi Gras parade. Ope or nope? Nope. Nope. Yeah, good for you. I like it. I love that you really gave it a thought. You know, hang on. <laughs> he gets a smattering of applause. Hang on, hey, Mardi Gras through for... this mind right now. <laughs> Mardi Gras parade. All right, uh-huh. all right, Don. Round two. Don number three, the phrase "O oh, for cute." Ope or nope? Ope. Ope, correct. It is very opey. It's just a whole group of lifelines out there. You can hear all oh, 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 oh. All right, sir. Number four is whale watching. Nope. Nope. You are correct. He says no, but he is correct. Right, sir. All right, Don. Parents who at one time or another had to shop for breezers. Oh, oh, perhaps you look, <laughs> yes. If you're a hockey mom, those are hockey pants. I'm sure everybody knew that. All right, next up, deep fried ranch dressing. Ope or nope? Ope. <laughs> Ope, yes. Featured Ope. at the Minnesota State Fair. Oh, yeah. Lines for blocks. Oh, anybody yeah. try it out yeah. there? Yeah. No? I did not. Did you dig it? Anyone? How was it, Brian? Zo? Tasty, just like you imagine. A dream. Yeah. Like a, dream. a dream, he says. Wow. I, I, I got the wrong dreams. I got I to gotta re, readdress some things. All right. Next up, Oprah Nope is having a date at the bullfights. 
Nope. Nope. That's outrageous. Of course not. That would just be silly. Running the table right here. Wow, this is nice. Great. All right, sir. Tourists destination to view Mayan ruins. Nope. Nope. That's right. That's, that's utter nonsense. Can you tell I'm guessing here? <laughs> <laughs> you can see the thought bubble up there. Well, All right, it, Don. Home of the nut goody. Hope. Hope is right. Hope. The Pearson's candy. Nice. Home style. All right, next up. Award winning spicy jambalaya. What do you think, Doug? Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. You are correct. Absolutely that is correct. Not. The difference, uh, but I, I wish everybody could see y'all's faces when you're answering. <laughs> Every Don's like, yeah, well, boom. Right. And every time Doug's like, ah, no. I don't know. Yes, well, I can't look stupid. I'm on radio. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up. <laughs> Absolutely. Woo. Numerous Mormon churches. Ope or nope? <laughs> nope. Nope, that is correct. Smattering of applause. I always thought Gorman Table Napkin Choir would be a good name for a band. (laughs) Sorry. Back to the game, Doug. Dougie Doug. You say goodbye, then you all go outside to say goodbye again. Ope or nope? Ope. Ope. It's very opey. Yeah. It's a a golf course. You get golf balls. What is it, Don? You look like you wanted to say something very no. much. No. It was Why is the crowd you. helping him? Yeah, what's what's with the bias? What is this? Just a likable guy. <laughs> it, uh, I am too. A girl. No, I, <laughs> I would interpret it as you don't look like you need help. <laughs> Sorry, Doug. Just, you know, got to take a shot at the guy here. I do? Yeah. No, I didn't say that. I implied it. There's a huge difference. <laughs> All right, Don, next up for you, meat raffles. Hope or no? Oh, Hope. Oh, so oh, Hope. Yes. Man. All right, Dougie, the last one. Like sitting on lawn chairs on the patio while cruising the lake. Pontoon rides. Hope or nope? Hope. Well, of course it's OP. Oh, 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 right Ope, on. Hope, Hope. Mr. and Miss Minnesota right here. Well played. Seven for seven. Both of you, which means it's time for a tiebreaker. Oh boy! Now Tony's going to ask a question, and uh, and we'll get your answers closest to the right answer wins the hockey tickets. Tony, all right, this is a tough one. You probably know this, but how many days does it take a sloth to digest a meal? <laughs> you probably know this. I ask you. Two. All right, Don says. Don two. says two. Doug? Let's say ye. It's a sloth. I'd say 19. 19. <laughs> it takes the, over. the correct answer is seven days. Oh. Geez. Seven days for a sloth. Uh, looks like Don's a little closer to seven with two. So, Don, you've won the hockey tickets right there. <laughs> Congratulations. Yes. Well, thank you very much. Wow. Right on. Thursday night at the uh, XL Energy Center, the home opener against Columbus. Have a great time. Very well played, both of you. Nice job. Nice job right there. Man. Very opie and nopey. My microphone smells like a woman now. <laughs> nice. A little perfume on here. Is that, like that. Is it Chanel number no. five? Is that is that beer I smell that smells like grain belt, maybe? It could be. This morning. Oh, a little touch of that. <laughs> uh, we know that uh, not everybody could be here. A bunch of folks listening out in Harris we want to say good morning to. Yeah, good old Harris. Tell me about the time you got your ass kicked in Harris. <laughs> no, I don't believe I <laughs> no, have. It didn't happen? No. I think I've always had a good time in Harris, as All I recall. Right. But, uh, you know, I'm not dead yet. That's something I can pin on the calendar. <laughs> That's a very to get around to. Very, very glad to hear that. Um, uh, you may have noticed when everybody got in yesterday, you get, on, uh, you get into your room. You go on the Wi-Fi, it's just Kragans. Boom, you click on it. It's easy to find. Um, I'm looking at a list of some of the great Wi-Fi names I've ever seen in my life. And this is my favorite. Right. There's a Wi-Fi network, a home that's it says, Grandma, click here. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that's fantastic. <laughs> um, another good one, Rebellious Amish Family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ope or nope? I like, oh, or nope. Nope. I like that one. Uh, I guess they ca- they couldn't spell Rumspringa, so they just went with that. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, uh, let's see what else we got. Connectile dysfunction. 
Oh, oh I like funny. that one. Yeah, that, that works. Well, Webby was in an apartment building once, and one came up on the list. He said that it was uh, named, I can hear you having sex. <laughs> that was the name of the room. That's a little subtle. I can hear you. And who wouldn't oh. click on that? Right. Webby was a little bummed it wasn't him. Um, this is a dark. This is dark, but it is kind of funny. There's the, this one is called Al Qaeda, but then when you log in, it says on your thing you have joined the Al Qaeda network. <laughs> Eat. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, oh, I like this one. Just simply searching. That's good. <laughs> Tell my wife I love her. Wi-Fi. Oh, oh, see what I'm saying? Good there. That's, All right. They wanted good. everyone to read that one. They sure did. Those are pretty good. All right. Fair enough. I'm just happy Cragen's just made it simple for us. <laughs> Man. Uh, we are up at uh, Cragen's Resort on Gull Lake uh, with Hoffman Weber Construction. Our good friends from Hoffman Weber and a whole bunch of our good friends here staring at us like we're animals in a zoo. Great to see you guys. Yeah. <laughs> and we're, uh, we're having a good time. I like the young ladies that were clearly forced to be here, but they're being very polite. Oh, no. I can that's only assume fantastic. they're following following along on our Facebook page or the KQ app. Is that what you're on over there? Probably no. I mean, okay. they're, they look like Instagram people to me. This is, so. a, this is a classic dad saying, you're going and you're going to like it. No, you're going to sit there in the front row and you're going to enjoy this. I and think. don't worry, they won't make fun of you on the radio. They won't mention you. Oh, wait, we just did. Sorry about that. Uh, happy to have you. Yeah, very happy to have you. Um, kind of sad news. There is a bit of a crime wave happening in the greater Minnesota uh, extended area. We need to bring you some of those headlines. Hang tight. Connect with us on the KQ Talk and Text Line. 651-989-ROCK. That's 651-989-ROCK. 92 KQRS. I'm Lolly from Lake City. Your name must be Leftovers, because I sure want to take you home with me. The KQ Morning Show live from Craig. Oh, that was... Nice job, Lolly. That was worth the wait. Get Thank you. Yeah. Here. Hey, boys and girls. Uh, while they can't be here in person, although I think a couple are going to show up later, Hoffman Weber Construction uh, wants to welcome everybody, and thank you all for being part of uh, this Up North weekend with KQ and Craigans. If you don't know, Hoffman Weber Construction started as a small family business in the Twin Cities over 30 years ago, specializing in roofing, siding, windows, and storm repair. I Stop me if I sound like a commercial. I've worked with Hoffman <laughs> Weber for years. I have. And uh, what separates them from the other companies? Not a pushy person in the bunch. No sign on the dotted line or we're, you know, going to steal your wife. They don't pressure you or anything like that. They just are genuinely want to help guide you through the process and make your ideas come to life. So here's the important part. Are you listening? On behalf of Hoffman Weber, please have a couple of drinks on them and enjoy your time. Hoffman Weber will be buying us a couple of drinks. Is this at happy hour this morning or what are we doing this? It's on the boat. It's on the boat yeah, tonight. We're, cruis- on we're the cruising boat. around the All lake. Right. We're cruising around Gull Lake with some drinks. Show up thirsty tonight. The first two are on Hoffman Weber. Thank you, Hoffman Weber. Yeah, yeah nice right surprise. On. Very nice, isn't it? Those very, guys. very nice. And I, I would like to just say, yeah, they're not going to steal your wife uh, unless you ask them to. Then <laughs> Hoffman Weber's here for you, whatever you need done. We'll Make do, no we'll do your it. roof and get your wife out of here for yeah, you. Whatever it takes, whatever it takes. Um, so, uh, you know, this is some. Occasionally, we do need to bring. Uh, the news to our listeners, you know, as, as, as sad and as dark as times can be. And uh, there's a bit of a crime wave. We're just reading all these headlines throughout the state, throughout the general area. And we thought we'd just let you know what's going on out there. For instance, Grand Hap- the Grand Rapids Herald Review. Yeah. Um, this is an actual story. A woman woke up to her husband threatening to flush his wedding ring down the toilet. <laughs> she, that, that made the paper. <laughs> Wait a second. She woke up to that? It wasn't woke at up. the end of a big fight. She woke up to him. I, I yeah. love the idea of, you know, you're coming to just like, <sighs> and you open your eyes. You're like, what are you doing? I'm going to flush it. <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm but don't you come anywhere closer. Oh. <laughs> Maybe uh, he was a snorer. Oh, oh she, was right. she was a snorer. Yeah. Yeah, maybe she fell asleep before, you know, sexy time. Again. Or during. This is like <laughs> or that. <during. laughs> this is like that Julia Roberts movie where she, she she made the mistake. She put the ring in the toilet, but it didn't flush. <laughs> What's that movie? The Laura! <laughs> I remember the movie. Chases her to Iowa. What is Sleeping right, with the yeah, Enemy? Yeah, sleeping oh, with the Enemy. Right, yeah. yeah. A bunch of dark movies. Oh, man. Uh, here's another one. A man in a. Pointing a gun stance. Pointing a gun stance was facing off against a cow. <laughs> I gotta spend more time in Grand Rapids. Yeah, somebody's having a good time up there. 
Uh, uh, a boss called 911. He asked, can you check on an employee who just does weird things that apparently God is telling him to do? Well, <laughs> I, I would take that call very seriously. Yeah, I hope they're not like uh, in charge of heavy equipment or anything dangerous. Quick note, if you ever want to see me leave a room, just mention that God just gave you some notes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you're talking to God, I got to go to the other room. Sorry. <laughs> or if he, well, no, if you're talking to God, that's fine. If he's talking to you, that's when I'm running out of the room. Uh, I like that. You got to call 911 to check on your own employee. Probably time to move on to the next employee. The Fergus Falls Daily Journal. A man got out of his car, punched out his own passenger window, and then returned to his driving. He self road raged himself. <laughs> or he road raged himself. Yeah. That's the responsible way to handle it. <laughs> I'm like, God damn it. Bastard cut me off. Hold on. I'm going to pull over and punch out my own window. That'll teach me. That'll do. <laughs> That's right. I shouldn't have been on this road at this time. Oh, man. Uh, a man lying face down in the grass near a bank. Turned out he was just sleeping it off. <laughs> That's what the alley's for. Don't be out. You're going to scare the good yeah. folk out there in the bank park or in the, I don't know, the little lawn there. Mm-hmm. Go to the alley. Cuddle up with the dumpster. Have yourself a little napski. But the little lawn is so well groomed. That is nice. Yeah, it really right. does feel awesome. So yeah, soft. I bet it does. Uh, a story in the New Ulm Journal. A woman who was suspected of being, quote, pretty high <laughs> while, while sitting in her parked car. Turned out she was just dealing with some emotions. Oh. <laughs> uh, bless her heart. Yeah. Oh, I will let you be then. Hey, man, <laughs> I, I've been there. I, I work through a lot in the car. So yeah. you find yourself in the parking lot at Target, and all of a sudden you're like, hang on, I need a yeah. few minutes to process this. Yeah. And I often wonder, what does someone walking by <laughs> think when they say, I'm, I'm talking to myself. Yeah, don't make eye contact with them. Don't make no, eye contact with simmer, them. Simmer, simmer, simmer. I feel like that's when we need to send in the weed fairy to get her pretty Yes, high. right, exactly. That takes care of that, doesn't it? <laughs> Hang on here. I'm looking at the, there's a class. Is there a weed fairy? The New Home <laughs> Journal wanted one weed fairy. All right. That's great. That's fantastic. Um, a caller uh, a caller to 911 in New Ulm said, there's a crazy light in the sky. It's a spotlight. It's been hovering in place for hours, but I know that it's not the moon. <laughs> I bet it is. Yeah. Speaking of pretty high, in that wheat fairy. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, the Hibbing Daily Tribune. Never miss it. A woman requested an officer's presence. They said, what's the problem? She goes, well... I'm going to my ex-boyfriend's house. I've got to get my step stool, some clothes, and my taco sauce, and I want an escort. <laughs> oh, that's that all I sa- need. That taco sauce is gone. That's what the fight will be over. You can take the step stool and your clothes, but I'm keeping yeah. the taco. That's I a, bought that taco sauce. That's a, that's a, that's the Steve Martin bit. All right. I need is this taco <laughs> sauce. My remote. Man. What, what's in that taco sauce? I, I, I don't even want to know. Magic. Tell you what, I'm, uh, there, there could be a reason there's an ex-boyfriend. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Maybe taco sauce is not exactly taco sauce. Right. Hang on a minute. This is all sounding very different to me all of a sudden. Four dogs, again from Hibbing. Four dogs equipped with bark collars kept helping each other out by chewing off each other's bark collars. <laughs> oh, I like that. Good boy. Bad boy. I love dog. Go team. That's the dog way, isn't it? You know, just get in there, get a pack together. Yeah. A man was walking the streets of Hibbing with a large knife and pepper spray. Uh-oh. When police approached him, they said, what's going on? He said, I'm afraid someone might attack me, so I'm yeah. just making sure they won't. <laughs> That's what everyone who saw you at Gold 911 yeah. was thinking. That that reminds me of a, uh, like if, you, if you're worried about people attacking you, of course, be armed and hold pepper spray. And yeah. keep it from happening. <laughs> um, I, I, got on, I got on a Southwest flight once, and I set, took a window seat. And a girl who, like a college age girl, a kid, sat in the aisle, and then the middle seat. There's no one in it, right? Yeah. And and they're saying the flights were almost full, so the last few people coming on, they're saying just take the first seat you can. No. And you're doing that thing where you're like, oh, someone's gonna get in the middle. I'm not gonna have any room. And I look, and the girl on the aisle seat. Every person coming on the aisle, she's looking up at them like. And she's padding. The no, seat don't. Next to no, her. no. She's padding honey. the seat. Like sit here. Like oh, do you she wanna... wants company. And, and she's or wait, doing is, this. is that scaring them off though? And then, the, the, okay, the front door is shut. We're done. We're ready to move. No one took the seat. <laughs> and the whole time she's doing this, I'm just like, oh, for God's sakes. And she looks over at me and she goes, it works every oh, time. Oh, you're clever. 
girl. Oh, she that's goes, funny. She goes, my mom taught me that. It always works. Oh, because, yeah, you don't want to sit down next to her. She's going to be a chatty yeah, cat. Yeah, every single person saw the, saw the seat and then saw her. Like, do you want, you want to sit here? Do you want to sit here? And oh. everyone walked oh, right by. I hope hilarious. you gave her your snack. I, I, I should have. Your, the, your sun back, chips. And I was very, very happy. That's cool. I like that. I'm going to remember that one. Uh, the Mankato Gazette. A woman tried to get a refund for the tent from the outdoor store where that very day she'd stolen the tent from. Oh, okay. They asked her for her receipt. She didn't have it. Ah, and know. they said, oh, wait, we saw you earlier. You stole that tent. Yeah. yeah you got to you gotta go for a different branch yeah. for the refund. Walmart. You can probably pull that off at Walmart. They don't ask for receipts. They're just like, you know, there's zombies back there yeah. just going through the motions. The outdoor store, yeah, they take it pretty seriously. You know, you can return something to Costco. You never need the receipt. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, and they, they really, there was a story last month, a guy returned a mattress after 10 years and they took it they were like yeah that's the policy well what the hell i mean i i'm too midwestern to do that my it would be my my the guilt mom you know branded into me i'd be like no i can't but a 10 year old i hope they burn that sucker i was gonna say i mean having spent enough time in the south you you wait for your team to win a big game and then you light the thing on fire that's (laughs) that's 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 an appropriate thing to do with a 10 year old mattress i like it uh let's see (laughs) Someone called 911 in Mankato. They said, I've just been out assaulted outside of a bar. Uh-oh. I left a bar. I got jumped. Police arrived. Multiple witnesses said, no, he tripped over the bench. <laughs> oh, but it's not a good story. Arrest that bench. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yes. I'm trying to think of all the times I, I, too, have tripped or fallen in a drunken stupor. Uh-huh. Never occurred to me to say, hey, hey. <laughs> I was assaulted. <laughs> a woman was concerned because she hadn't been able to reach her dog groomer again in the Mankato Gazette. The officer checked Facebook and told the woman, um, she, yeah, she just had a baby. Oh. <laughs> she just gave birth to a daughter three days ago. Checking out how bad was the dog getting? How shaggy are we talking yeah, here? Really? I'm a little worried about my dog groomer. <laughs> Something tells me she was more worried about the dog. Yeah. Selfish. <laughs> uh, a man has been banned from a church in Mankato after he mooned someone during Sunday services. Oh. <laughs> I, like I mean, that, that would one. get me into church once. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. I like that. What's going on there? Someone, there's a little <laughs> rivalry going on. Um, the Eli Echo. Police responded to a man walking in the middle of the road yelling at cars. When officers asked the man to leave the area, he responded by, according to the police report, doing karate moves <laughs> and then bit the officer who originally tried to take him into custody. The notes suggested that he had the odor of alcoholic beverages. Oh, no. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Anytime the karate moves come out, yeah, mm-hmm. you're either a nerd, one of those LARPers, or you're drunk. Or you're an I, Elvis impersonator. I was, <laughs> about once a year, I will find myself on YouTube looking for for old 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 karate Elvis and it's just like the <laughs> you know in his mind it's hoo ya pa and then you see the video and it's like hang on a minute <laughs> it's like it's like a comes the job but the cape man man the cape is strong I, I, anytime an adult man is in a unitard like that with sparkles and peacock feathers and crap oh, yeah. on it you got it's either working or it's not and it always works for him I as a giraffe's ass um, uh, I love. I just love the note: bloodshot, watery eyes, and the odor of alcoholic beverages. <laughs> yeah, I bet it's a good band name, good punk band name. Odor like, of alcoholic beverages. I like the Ely Echo. I haven't heard of the Ely Echo. Ely. That's got a ring to it. Did I say Ely or did I say Eli? I'm, I'm tired. Oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm tired. Uh, the Detroit Lakes Tribune: A Moorhead man was charged with felony theft after loading a shopping cart at the Detroit Lakes Walmart. With several trail cameras, camping yeah, items, check. knives, right. laundry pods, <laughs> for for a camping trip, well, um, it's a cheap high. Yeah. Speakers, <laughs> other automotive accessories, toys, Christmas decorations, batteries, hell? and a fragrance gift set for Ma. All in a giant cart. What the? And then he just walked out without paying. His biggest mistake is he walked out of one of the emergency exits. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at you me. Were, you were doing great, dude. You had all the booty you needed. You had all your stuff. Nobody stopped you. You just went to the wrong door. Cater piled too high. He couldn't see the emergency exit handle, you know, there when he... Oh, so close yet so far away. Mom's not going to get her fragrance gift set, I guess. 
Um, I, I, I've told part of a story once before. My family for a little while ran a restaurant, and there was an incident where a guy, we towed a car from the parking lot, and the guy had just gotten out of prison, all true story. And he came into the restaurant and said, you towed my car? And we said, yeah. And, uh, and this was in the small town paper, trust me, yeah. the next day. And he looked right at the chef of the restaurant, and he goes, I'm going to Google my car, and I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to kill you. Okay. And he turned around and left, and we're all like, <laughs> yeah. We're like, yo, dude, okay. And then... Uh, he did. He came back and he literally tried to kill the chef. But right on his tail was a police. I mean, police were there within moments of this assault. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And afterwards, we were like, how, how, who called you guys? How did you know? And he go, oh, well, he went to get his car over at the wrecker. And they, uh, they, they, the guy said, uh, you know, you cool? And he goes, yeah, but I'm going back to that restaurant to kill that guy. <laughs> he, told, he told the guy at the wrecker service, at Jones Brothers Wrecker, yeah, I'm going over to Lone Oak to kill that guy. Yeah. And then they're like, that, we should probably call the cops. And, they, and thank God they did. <laughs> yeah, but it was in the paper. That was I remember reading the next day the story, and it was like, yeah, he really did that. Yeah, some Tip people arrest them themselves, don't they? That's uh, the, self arrest. Another God, so many good names. Yeah, so many good names. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so uh, the small. Let's 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 uh, just quick poll here. What's the smallest town you ever got arrested in? That's a joke. See, they're all like, oh, well, I'm trying to I don't know if I would go by population um, or square footage, uh, square acreage of the town. Well, I was arrested in Woolsey, South Dakota, population 350. Attaboy. I don't know if it gets Attaboy. any smaller than that. It was, however, later determined to be a misunderstanding. Um, Van Horn, Texas, population 1,920, the site of my one arrest. In yeah? Life. Yeah. <laughs> There's no handcuffs or anything, but I got it. I was, eh, you know, possession thing happened. I feel like I'd rather there. get arrested in South Dakota than Texas. It was yeah. a little it was a little troubling, yeah. to be sure. Yeah. The, the possession. Sheriff, you the, have to the, stand tall before the man. The sheriff was quite quite sincerely doing a Jackie Gleason from Smoking the Bandit <laughs> thing. He just came walking in and he's just like, you almost be a band. <laughs> Hiking up his like, pants. Yeah, and of course the stock answer was always accountants actually. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't think that was funny at all. <laughs> Um, Jeff Dunham, speaking of funny, is at the Target Center April 10th. We got front row seats. Ooh, wow. great. Yeah, baby. Great. Scott, we got front row seats, and we're going to give them away, and we're going to need a couple people to play a game. Hang tight. It's the KQ Morning Show, 92 KQRS. It's the KQ Morning Show. Steve, Zepp, Tony, and Ryder on Minnesota's Classic Rock. Rock 92 KQRS. Hey, everybody. I'm Amy from Blaine. Oh, boy, you put the ass in casserole. You are one hot dish. <laughs> Welcome to the KQ wow. Morning Show live from Craigan. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Very nice. I'm more hungry for casserole in my life. <laughs> It's like a broadcaster's convention here. Well done, Amy from Blaine. Yeah, it sounds Amy. great. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Nice. Uh, Jeff Dunham is going to be at the Target Center April 10th. He's a very funny man. And we have front row seats <clears throat> that we are about to give away. We got a couple of folks who are ready to play a game. Oh, well, I don't know if they're ready. We're ready to watch them struggle and suffer through this little bit of magic. Yes, it's the game of all games. It's time again to beat the toaster. Here's what we do. There's a toaster uh, right here during our live broadcast. We like that. And we pop a slice of bread in there. Then we give you a category that requires some thought. And you list and name spontaneously whatever pops into your head. As many as possible. But you only have 15 seconds to do so before the toast oh. pops. Yeah, while baby. Making, while making eye contact with Tony. Well, preferably. <laughs> that's, a, that's an added twist. Yes. That is an added twist. If you do that, you'll turn to stone. <laughs> wow. All right. So... Uh, it looks like we've got we've got Amy, and then, uh, sir, your name is? Jack. Say it right. Naked Jack. <laughs> Naked Jack. <laughs> Naked Jack. Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, well, Naked Jack, I, 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 I've lost my manners. Give me your favorite band. Led Zeppelin. That works. Favorite team. Any sport. Vikings. All right. Okay. Zeppelin and the Vikings. Very strong. Amy, favorite band. Who you got? Fleetwood Mac. Okay. All right. Well, you don't have to look like I should have yeah, known. Of course. <laughs> Fleetwood Mac, dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, what team? Any sport? Uh, Vikings. There you go. All right. Oh, Fleetwood Mac, Zeppelin, Vikings. It all makes sense to me. It's time to play Beat the Toaster. Amy, you're going to go first. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. All right, Amy. Here's your category. I want you to give me... Things that rhyme with loon. 
Go. Tune. Goon. <laughs> soon. Uh, moon. Um, cocoon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, cartoon. Ding. Yes. Nice. I you like got it. that last one in there. Okay. I got I got seven. So I, I heard seven as yeah, well. I, seven, I, yeah. Amy, and, uh, I'm so disappointed you didn't get pontoon in there. Oh, oh of course. Up north. Oh, yes. Oh, well, Ryder, now you you've really so just silly, Amy. Gosh, Amy's got a nosebleed now. Hey, Ryder. and I looked at you, too. <laughs> I know I felt slow right through. <laughs> I like the fact that you couple the I mean, when you go extra syllables even, you know, double syllable action, Try that's it. strong. Try Excellent it. work. Nice job. Seven is a strong start. All right, Naked Jack, you are up round one. Good luck, sir. All right, Naked Man. Uh, your category. <laughs> I, <laughs> don't blush. You're the one with the nickname Naked. Uh, your category is things you can fold. Go. T-shirt, socks, jeans, paper, towels, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, napkins, nice, uh, underwear, uh, ding, uh, oh, sorry, the toast head. God, it's Steve think, Martin, how to fold soup. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I think that was right, six so is what six, I got. Six, yes. Right, well well done. Oh, we got it? us a game show. Yeah, yeah, tight this is race. a couple of gamers right here. Fair enough. All right, round two is usually where, you know, we separate the wheat from the chaff. So, uh, mm-hmm. again, I wish you both the best. All right, Amy. So, you're a princess in medieval times. You look out your castle window. <laughs> what do you see? Go. I see a knight. I see dragons. I see a bridge. I see um, my townspeople. I see a, 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 a drawbridge. I see a moat. I see um, peasants. Dang. Wow. Very She finally strong. figured out the name of her people. Yeah, I was going to say. I was like, wow, both townspeople and peasants. Well, you got to have both. If you could have gone with some serfs, then we really would have been somewhere. Um, so what was that? Was that six? I got seven. So, again, seven. Yeah. Wow. My lucky seven. Yeah. Man, right all right. On. Very well played. Very cool. <laughs> uh, Jack, brother, you got your work cut out for you. Amy's get, sitting on 14. You have six. Good luck, sir. You can do Thanks. this. You can. Bring it on home, Jackson. Okay, you're in jail and you're kind of bored to pass the time you think this. I want you to name some TV shows that take place in or revolve around police departments. Go. Chips. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. CSI. Sure. Uh, just start naming cities. Oh, man. That's I like you kept all your answers to under five letters. Right. Five letters or less. Who the, who the thought of chips was the first chips. one that popped in your head? Chips. Drug. Man. Well, Estrada is a legend. Oh, no. Someone was watching Hulu this morning. Right. That's, that's exactly right. Jack, strong effort. Yeah. Just the delivery on yeah. chips alone really uh, yeah. is, earns a special commendation. But Amy and her peasants have won the yeah. day. Amen. Thank you. Well played, Amy from Blaine, picking up tickets. Front, front row tickets to Jeff Dunham. That's going to work just fine. Target Center. Uh, the pre-sale, if anyone else wants to buy tickets, hits today at 10 a.m. The code is peanut. Oh. I don't get it either. I don't get it either. <laughs> peanut. What'd you That's, you That's your code. <laughs> Uh, I, I think of you more like a little walnut, <laughs> like a peanut, you know, <laughs> just a nut in general, I guess. Right. Um, well, very well done. That, that was, yeah, that was, I, it was I, invigorating. And it's great when we can, when we have a game show and we we can actually watch watch our contestants. Per, yeah. Say, yeah, the, the, I like that. Seeing the wheels the turn. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, Amy and, coming with a lot of confidence, and Jack just. I think he would have been more comfortable had he been naked. <laughs> and by the way, I, I called him naked, Jack. Started calling him that on this trip because. Uh, Jack called into the morning show one morning, and uh, I forget what the topic was that morning, uh, but he regaled us with a story of being naked somewhere. Oh, okay. that makes sense. And it stuck. Um, I was having a conversation last night about Nimrod, Minnesota, <laughs> yes. which I did not realize was an actual place. Uh-huh. I'll be honest, first time I heard about it. Um, 
But Nim, the the term Nimrod, uh, which I've heard used, uh, I never, I didn't know this, uh, came out of Daffy Duck's mouth first in a 1948 cartoon. He called Elmer Fudd a Nimrod. I could have swear it and came out of my where, dad's mouth first. <laughs> the, the first time, a pop cultural reference right. anyway. Um, and then also Bugs Bunny uh, once insulted Yosemite Sam by saying, you're a Nimrod. <laughs> I like Nimrod. it. Nimrod. Imagine living in your hometown and suddenly you're like, they're using our town name as a son of a... What the hell is this? Well, well I grew up in son of a bitch Kentucky, so yeah. <laughs> I had to get used to it early on. It was tough. Uh-huh. I bet they got a chip on their shoulder. I bet you don't want to get, go into the Nimrod Muni and start firing off Nimrod jokes. I don't. I don't think you want to. Um, a lot of words that we use uh, actually got their start in TV and movies. Cowabunga, uh, which I haven't heard lately. I did not know this. Anybody know the or, the origin of cowabunga? I'm gonna go Bart origin. Simpson. Howdy no. doody. Oh, all right. Howdy well, doody. Hair wow. before my time, but yeah. Wow. Sure. Uh, Chief Thunder Thud was the character. <laughs> that was his greeting. Cowabunga. That's my porn name. <laughs> <laughs> Emphasis on the thud. Well, you know, I'm at that age. Um, check this out. So most people who use, if, if you're if you're um, imitating a frog, the word ribbit, that's just mm-hmm. part of it. It's like mm-hmm. ribbit. That, that goes back to an episode of Gilligan's Island. What? I knew Gilligan. everything about Gilligan. Uh, as a rabbit, or as Mel- a rabbit, listen to me, as a frog? Mel Blanc, so? apparently, the, the guy that did all the cartoon sure, voices, yeah. Mel Blanc, Legend, apparently, yeah. there's a character called Ribbit the Frog right. that had something to do with a, 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 a Gilligan's Island episode, but then later he appeared on the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour as that, and called himself Ribbit the Frog, and that okay. just got stuck. All right. I don't know, it's just kind of fascinating yeah, to me. Interesting. Um, and then, of course, uh, Spam. We are in Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, for a lot of people, it's a it's a it's a delicious way to liven up your meal, and then for others, it's a Monty Python reference. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. The song "Spam" and "Spam a Lot" and all that bit. Um, and then we just played uh, "Beat the Toaster," and of course, the last one, "Your Toast," meaning when someone's in serious trouble. Apparently, the first time that was used was in Ghostbusters. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that was a Bill Ooh. Murray line, wasn't it? Yeah. Or, yeah. Wasn't yeah. It? Toast. Your toast. Yeah. Your toast. All right. This chick is toast. Oh, that's right. One of that the- was the, the first reference? For, apparently, yeah. that's the first one. Sounds like it's been around longer than that, but it seems like it should. The internet been. doesn't lie. No, of course it doesn't lie, Brian. <laughs> that's, I mean, where would we be without the internet? My God, are we sitting up here with a bunch of newspapers right now? <laughs> um, is this? Am I? Am I getting this right? Are we? Are we sitting on some Iron Maiden tickets as oh, well? Oh yeah. What the what? hell? Yeah. Oh my it's like God. Christmas and horns up. October. Fair enough. Yep. Yeah. Rocktober Christmas. <laughs> um, before before we talk about that, I do need to give a, a quick shout out to our friends down in Burnsville. Burnsville, Minnesota. Yeah. Good morning. Yeah, good old, good old Burnsville. Burnsville. I don't know. I did. Uh, I know I did a bar gig there for like four years. Venue 13 there in Burnsville uh, for some really good times. I don't know what it is now. I think it's a, a fantasy gift shop, I believe. Ah. Okay. But yeah. You so think so? Serving up better times. I don't know. But <laughs> oh yeah, Burnsville, always for a good time. And uh, is the mall still cooking over there? I got to come up with something better Burnsville than Burnsville Center. Burnsville, spent, Burnsville spent Center. Way too much time at Burnsville Center. Yeah. 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 What was your favorite place to hang? Oh, obviously the movie theater. It was dark in there. You could get away with a lot of things. What's that store where all the goth chicks hung out? Spencer's? What was that one? Hot Topic. Spencer's Hot Topic. Kids. I remember my gr- my yeah. girls liked Hot Topic. Yeah, they went through the... Sure. Yeah. yeah. That's where all the goths meet up. Yeah, exactly. I remember I went in there one day and bought a t-shirt. My, Where did you get that? Oh, I got it at Hot Topic. I was at the mall today. They're like, don't, Dad, stop. Get it off. Don't. <laughs> Take you up north with Hoppin' Weber Construction. We are at Cragen's Resort on Gull Lake. We got a whole bunch of folks just staring at us and it's a lot of fun (laughs) and we also have as i just mentioned iron maiden tickets we're going to give those away momentarily hang tight connect with us on the kq talking text line 651-989-ROCK that's 651-989-ROCK 92 kqrs good morning i'm keith with my lovely wife lisa from byron and I gotta say, you're so hot, I bet you could thaw my brats. <laughs> wow! Oh my God. It's the KQ Morning Show, live from Cricket. Yeah! Uh, well done. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> that boy. I, awesome. natural. I don't think that's the first time you've said those words, my friend. <laughs> wow! Yeah, that's awesome. Smooth right yeah. there. Yeah. 
This is the KQ Morning Show. We are at Cragen's on Gull Lake. We are having, what do they call it, a pretty good time. Mm-hmm. Heck yeah, Now that the bar is open. Did I mention that the bar is open? The bar is Woo! open. <laughs> it's okay. We all right. Patiently. We waited patiently. You're right. We snuck in our own hooch, and now we're buying hooch. Yes. That's how this That's works. That's how it works. Uh, speaking of hooch, well, I mean, we can speak of hooch anytime, but Iron Maiden's coming October 22nd at the XL Energy Center, and we would love to give away some Iron Maiden tickets, but in order to do so, we have to subject a few listeners to some torturous exercise in the form of a game. I do believe Tony Lee is more than prepared. Tony, what are we going to do today? Once again, this is uh, appropriate, necessary, and entertaining. <laughs> What's happening? It's called, well, isn't this clever? Brain nerd. Brain oh. nerd. <laughs> yeah. I really had no idea what to do with it. I, ju- I just like the title. So, okay then, smarty pants. <laughs> Brain nerds. How about a kooky and interesting trivia throwdown right here in Brainerd? Do Let's it. do it. Right here in Brainerd, you know. Take care of it right here. All right, contestants. Okay, uh, we've got a couple of people ready to rock. Uh, you, sir, your name, please. John. John. Give me your favorite band, John. Starts with Jimmy. I'll let you guess the rest. Okay. Right. I, I guess we're talking Hendrix. <laughs> One more chance. Buffett. Jimmy <laughs> Eat Ray Vaughn. Ray Vaughn. Mr. Mojo Rising. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, fair enough. We'll give you the doors. Jimmy uh, Dean's pork sausage experience. <laughs> yes. Uh, no. This thing is so big. Oh, uh, how about? <laughs> That's what she hey, said. Hey, Mister. Yeah. You go. What the? Uh, favorite team? Any sport? Minnesota Wild. The Wild. Oh, yeah. Right on. Yeah. All right, John. And uh, and you, young lady. What's your name? I'm Christina. Christina. What is your favorite band? Queen. Queen. Favorite team, any sport? The Wild all the way. The Wild all the way. All right, a couple of Wild fans. Let's get wild Woo! with Brain Nerd. I must say, when I met uh, Christina last night, I saw her hat, which says zero Fs given. I thought it said Klux Chicken. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I thought for a second it said F Ogilvy. I'm like, who's Ogilvy? I don't know. I thought they got Ogilvy. I didn't know. But I was, you know, yeah. overserved again. All right, kids, uh, should we go back and forth again? I All right. Think so. We're going to go back and forth with these challenging and fascinatingly odd trivia questions. We're going to see who's the brain nerd. Uh, all right, who's going first, John or Christina? Ladies, of course. Of course. Ladies, ladies. Ladies. All right, Cluck's Chicken in the house. All right. Number one, your question, a group of pugs, those little dogs that snort, a group of pugs is called A, a serving, B, a grumble, or C, a pug fest? I'm going to go with B. B, a grumble is correct. Really? Oh. Yeah, I mean, that was fast. You that knew that. Was. Did you know that? that, or was it a guess? That was a guess. A it grumble felt of right. pugs. It felt right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. It felt right. It just sounds like a street yeah. fight with <laughs> dogs that look like someone smashed them in the face with a shovel. Right. I'd fight if I looked like that. Has okay, there that's ever just been, I mean, how does that happen that you get a grumble of pugs together? I mean, it's just fate, kismet. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Dog parks. All oh, right. Yeah, okay. Big okay. John. Big John. Big John. Big John. The real technical name for the hashtag symbol is A, a Bonnaroo, B, a Malapropism, or C, an Octothorpe. A. Bzzz, I am sorry. Oh. It is not a Bonnaroo. It is an Octothorpe. Octothorpe. Yes. Never yeah. heard of that. I was thinking of a malapropism as an incorrect usage of something. My friend Carrie is famous for doing that. And uh, she said it's it's the best thing since fresh fish. Ooh. <laughs> uh, okay. Not sliced bread. Oh, I mean, fresh, fresh fish. fish. Yeah, that, that goes yeah. way back. Yeah, that <laughs> goes, I mean, friend. literally yeah. way back. I mean, that's almost primordial. But anyway. You say fresh fish to me, I think about Gilligan's Island. <laughs> of course. All roads lead to back Gilligan. to the island. No, you know, the, uh, the, the My Fair Lady, the Jekyll and Hyde episode, where oh. if you scream fresh fish, he turns into yes. Mr. Hyde. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, if oh I could God. get rid of the half the crap I remember, it would be a, I would love my life. Oh, man. But here I am thinking about Gilligan's Island. Yeah. All right, Christina, you're visiting a city known as the Big Easy. Where are you? Is it A, Prostitutia, B, Brainerd, 
or C, New Orleans? C. You are correct. C. Very, Orleans. very good. If you were to drop a pin on prostitution, if you could. <laughs> I was going to say A, but. Mm, yeah, right. It's pretty, yeah. isn't it? Stick with the safe one. <laughs> John, the first toy to be advertised on a TV commercial was A, G.I. Joe with a Kung Fu grip, B, Little Bag of Glass, or C, Mr. Potato Head? C. That is correct, yes, Mr. Sir. Potato Head. Woo, I'm on the board. Monsieur Pomme de Terre Tête. I had that Kung Fu grip G.I. Joe with the lifelike hair and beard. <laughs> yeah. What, are you kidding? The camo onesie. Yeah. Come on, man. Have you ever learn how G.I. Joe got that little scar on his cheek? Barbie. Uh, explain Ch- that. Yeah. Bar- Sass and Barbie, yeah. <laughs> Sassy Barbie. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Christina Lesur, Minnesota. Lesur, Minnesota, you know, is the hometown of A, Flo from Progressive Insurance, B, the Jolly Green Giant, or C, Nico the Acrobatic Muskrat? I'm going to say B. Yes, the Jolly Green Giant. Wow. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Man. The what was jolly. the muskrat again? Uh, Nico. I like Nico. that. Nico the Acrobatic wow. Muskrat. Nico the Acrobatic Muskrat. But before, Not from but before you got the words from Progressive, I thought I thought of uh, at the show Alice. Was it Flo the waitress? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, like, kiss, kiss my, my grits. grits. Yes, that's right. Flo. Mel, kiss my grits. And literally, a nation laughed as one. Every, every time she said that, we all looked at each other like, "Isn't life great?" Yeah, that was it. Because then it went back to Alice. She was kind of a downer, to be honest with you. She really she was. was. Well, she had a hard life. I okay. It's not just single motherhood. I know. Whatever. <laughs> Let's talk about those grits. <laughs> Who's up, Big John? Big John. The motto of the Cub Scouts is A, always aware, B, do your best, or C, I can't undo this knot. <laughs> B. B is correct. Wow. Man. I was a Weeblos. Oh, that was the next step up, was that? You're the darn wee- right. You Boy Scouts, the Weeblo, Weeblo, and then... Mm-hmm. Wait, like Cub Scout, then we blow, then Cubs Boy Scout, Weeblo. right? Wasn't we blow yeah. in the middle between Cub yes. and Boy? Yes. Okay. <laughs> between Cub and Boy. That's right. <laughs> Cub has become Boy. Easy. We're gonna Easy. We, every uh, every boy will wrestle a bear cub before they get their hands. <laughs> That's part of the promise we make to these children. If you haven't wrestled a bear cub, you're not going to get the bandana. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, Christina, the famous armless statue Venus de Milo is found where? A. Ripley's Believe It or Not in Vegas. B. The Louvre in Paris. Or C. The Lobby of the Courtyard by Marriott in Bangkok. <laughs> what? B. Yes, that is true. Correct. Bam. Ding. Ding. John, the dangly thing located at the back of your throat is... A, uvula, B, Yucatan, or C, Glockenspiel. Tempted to go with C, but Mm -hmm. I have to say A. You are correct. That's it. Exactly. I could say it, but I'm not going to. Say it. it. Deep throat. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were going to say gag reflex, Mm -hmm. but we're thinking the same thing. Yeah. Hot Hot got him. Oh, oh, sorry. You. I'm so sorry. No, you're good. Uh, I don't know what, if some, what if you put a, a, a tone bar from a glockenspiel in your throat where the uvula goes? Yes. That's and what then every about. time you swallow, you just hear like a... Ding. 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 <laughs> He's the man. He's got the glockenspiel throat. <laughs> Special trick. Christina, every year, every year in England, participants risk breaking bones and humiliation, chasing this down the dangerously steep Cooper's Hill. Is it A, a neon green frisbee? B, a baby chimp dressed as a cop? <laughs> or C, a wheel of cheese? <laughs> Ashwell cheese. <laughs> yes, a wheel of cheese. That is correct. That's right. Nice job. All right, last but, one. But oh, we yes. do have a baby chip dressed as a cup. <laughs> Bring him out, boys. <laughs> That's zany. John here. Okay, here's the very last one. The very first enclosed shopping mall in the country was A, Harmar Mall in Roseville, B, Southdale in Edina, or C, Toby's in Hinkley. 
A. Oh, I'm sorry. It is oh, B, Southdale, Indy Dyna. Yeah, Harmar's Man. was the first to close, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah, the Harmar right. Superstar, baby. Harmar Superstar. Man, um, well played, uh, both of you, but it looks like Christina ran the table. Oh, five for five. Yeah. Yeah. Clux Chicken brings it home. Man, so uh, you will be at the Iron Maiden Show October 22nd at the XL Energy Center. Have a fun time, won't you? Great. Yeah, this is going to be it. great. Run to Christina, the John, thank you, sir. Yeah, My thank you pleasure. Too. She's the brainiac. Right. Brain, nerd. Brain nerd. Brain nerd. Man. Nice job. Very nice job. Um, okay, fun fact about me. Never seen Iron Maiden. No. Never seen them. All right. Well, this will be this will be number one for me. Tell it around. I think most of the band intact. I really don't know. It's been so many years since I've seen them. More than ten, okay. less than twenty, somewhere in there. I think. Eddie's always there, and that's what we need. Eddie's there, and Bruce there. will be bringing them in on yep. the Iron Maiden jet. Yeah, well, that's right. Bruce flying them in. Bruce Dickinson. I um I can't imagine. Getting onto an airplane helmed by a bandmate. <laughs> I mean, could you? You wouldn't even let a bandmate drive a van, would you? Maybe. No. Oh God, no, no. no. I, I was always driving. A big plane. He wears the full uniform. He said oh, he I takes know. it very yeah. seriously. Yeah. Yeah, I would hope so. Um, speaking of bands that have been around a minute, the Scorpions, or if you prefer, the Scorpions, <laughs> uh, return to Las Vegas. Coming home to Las Vegas, 60 years of the Scorpions residency opens February 27th at Planet Hollywood Resort and Casino. You can score a trip for two. That includes round trip air, a two night stay, tickets to opening night, and more. Text the national keyword concert to 95819 for a chance to win. Concert to 95819. Der Scorpions. Der Scorpions. Der Scorpions. I guess it would be Der Scorpions. Yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, my yeah, German's not what it once was. Uh uh-uh. uh. I know a little German, and he's standing right over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, top. Five at nine. Hang tight. It's the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. You're listening to the KQ Morning Show. Steve, Zepp, Tony, and Ryder on 92 KQRS. I'm Tanya from Zimmerman. Your name must be Leftovers because I sure you want to take you home with me. <laughs> wow. That's right. It's the KQ Morning Show from Cragen's up at Gull Lake. We're having ourselves a fine Friday morning. The bar is open. The sun is up. Yep. The breakfast number two is going down. I'm half in the bag. (laughs) Man. Yeah, sunshine. Not a view to be had around here, though, unfortunately. 651-989-ROCK is the KQ Talk and Text Line, and I have to share a text that came in after I said, Der Scorpions. My German grammar has been corrected. Scorpion is masculine, which would be der, but since the band name is plural, it would be die scorpions. Oh, thank you, brain oh. nerd. Die scorpions? It's <laughs> even more cool. Yeah, that's no, very I like cool, that as the band name. Die scorpions. Really? Yes. Die scorpions. Mm-hmm. Um, it reminds me of The Simpsons, where the scene where uh, Sideshow Bob has tattooed the words die, Bart, die yes. on his chest. <laughs> yeah. And he's in court, and they say, what, you you weren't trying to hurt him? And he says, no, that's the German, the Bart. <laughs> and then one juror looks at another and goes, well, no one who speaks German could be an evil man. <laughs> oh, gosh. oh, I don't know how they do it. It's still funny. All right, let's get into the top five at nine, shall we? Shall we? <laughs> As I mentioned, this is KQ Up North with Hoffman Weber Construction. We're at Cragen's Resort on Gull Lake. If you're not here, you should be. Uh, we got a cruise tonight. Our friends from Hoffman Weber are picking up two drinks for everybody on the cruise. Nice. Oh, yeah. Got to appreciate that. Start there. Wow. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, There are worse ways to pass the weekend, so we're thrilled to be here, and we're glad for everybody who's with us. Uh, Number four, on your top five at nine, Ohio State University has put a new vending machine in their stadium, the football stadium, the Horseshoe, a legendary place. Located in the south stands, this new vending machine is a part of a partnership with the Ohio Pork Council. That's right, it is a 
bacon vending machine. Mm. I mean, this is freaking brilliant, but it does kind of piss me off a little bit. This is go right into one of those things like, how the hell didn't we think about this? It's, it's really... I mean, it's so obvious that yeah. in 2024, they're springing the bacon vending machine. I just assumed the technology wasn't there. They didn't have a grease trap sophisticated <laughs> enough for a vending machine. But. We, we sent a man to the God. moon in a toaster oven, basically. Yeah. Yeah, and that and, and been we that. can't figure out how to get bacon into a vending machine. Neil Armstrong landed. That should have been the next thing on the administration's agenda. Let's get the bacon vending machine going. What, they could have the pork council could have helped NASA along. What if Neil Armstrong, as he stepped down, said, "This is one small step for a man, a giant leap for mankind, and I'm going to do it with fresh bacon." <laughs> they wouldn't have faked that. Not, could it, there couldn't have been a more American moment ever. No. no. That's, uh, that's what if he let go? That slice of bacon would be floating through space for years. No, years. no, no way, man. John Glenn would have tracked that thing down. <laughs> you know, I, don't, I don't want M and M's or Gardettos for breakfast. You know, that's what the, what we have in the vending machine at KQ. We need the bacon <laughs> vending machine. Get bacon her done. Vending machine is pretty strong. <laughs> uh, number three on your top five at nine. Um, if you're if you're familiar, if you spend any time on the water, uh, surely you know about these flying carp. This invasive oh, yes. nuisance fish that's on its way to Minnesota. It's coming up out of Iowa. I mean, what good comes from Iowa? Mm-hmm. Uh, nope. Still got nothing for Still you. Still trying, yeah. Uh, well, these, oh, these they're uh, technically hands. silver carp uh, from Mississippi up to Iowa. Now they're coming into Minnesota. And these things are big. They can weigh up to 40 pounds. They jump yeah. 10, 12 feet out of the water. Oh. And there's videos all over YouTube. We were just watching some. They're just leaping into boats. They're smashing into people. I mean, people have broken jaws and collarbones. <laughs> you're just One minute you're on a boat, and another minute a giant carp is attacking you. These things are nuts. I see the South St. Paul Trail. Trap club in a boat with uh-huh. shotguns, getting some work done out there on the river. They're That's bloodthirsty. Yeah, they just they got them up in the air. Boom! Blast those bad boys. Well, if you don't, it, 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 well, the state of Minnesota is not going to recommend we take our shotguns on the water. However, they are putting up what they're calling a bioacoustic fish fence. Stop it, Minnesota! Bioacoustic fish fence, or the acronym BAF. <laughs> it's, Are we going to play a tune for the car? It's a tool yeah. that uses bubbles to intensify sound in the water, and then that scares the carp away. I mean, and this is an awesome thing that's nowhere near as awesome as a shotgun. Yeah, yeah I mean, they're Sorry. overthinking it. Shotgun. Yeah, just, just shotgun or maybe maybe a sword. You know, like just stand there, <laughs> some sword play with these carp. Perhaps I want a spear, man. Spear they're those bad boys. Much better. Uh, One of those I, tridents. We, we, you know, you and I... Uh, caught some fish earlier this year yeah. if, if there had been a, a, a threat of fish leaping into the boat and we were given weapons that would have been a whole different experience yeah it would have been a whole we'd, we'd probably still be there that I'd would be awesome be doing a heck of a lot more fishing I like it combat fishing man yeah. uh, 12 million dollars for this project for the BAF um, to but scare it's the gonna be off. it's gonna be installed at lock and dam number five in Minnesota City hmm. uh, it sounds spendy Sounds very, very spendy. I'm sure it'll work perfectly. Um, but, you know, the silver carp, they are scared of high-frequency sound. And, hey, I can relate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number two on your top five at nine, Mickey's Diner has reopened in yeah. downtown St. Paul. 80 years, uh, over 80 years, Mickey's Diner's been serving it up. Closed down during the pandemic. Uh, they are back in business. 36 seats as per usual, filling that dining car. Yeah. And I look forward to going because, as I said earlier, I've, I've driven by that place a million times in the last year and a half. Mm-hmm. And every time I look at it with a little bit of like, oh, man. Yeah. Oh, hey, it's I, an I, icon. Bet that, I bet that was awesome. Oh, yeah. Still, uh, yeah, it'll be awesome. Again, 80 years, I bet they still haven't cleaned that griddle. That's just <laughs> not a chance. flavor on there. Not a chance, mm. baby. Number one on your top five at nine. Let's talk about some Sunday morning football. The Minnesota Vikings. Have I mentioned they're four and stinking O? Oh, How about that? Taking on the New York Jets, who are two and two. This game will be played in London, England. The Vikings are favored, but only by two points or two and a half, depending on where you're looking. Uh, a, a, a home game for the Vikings in London. Uh huh. And uh, <laughs> but the over under is forty points. I uh, by the way, if you're looking for a couple of betting insights, the Vikings have not lost a game against the spread all season. It, yeah. Okay. That, that, oh, that's pretty strong. Yeah, that's very strong. Um, I like the over on this one. We talked about yeah, that. 40 yeah, forty points. For Jets defense, I think, is overrated. Vikings defense, you couldn't overrate them. They statistically are the best in the league. In DVOA, they're 
far and away the best in the league. It's yep. a boat race so far. So I think that uh, I, I, but I could see, I can't believe what I'm about to say. I could see Sam Darnold lighten up this New York Jets defense. All right. On, on all right. He's what? got that Jets chip on his mm-hmm. shoulder. Uh, Certainly does. Bring it. And he's got, I think, the best receiving core in the NFL uh, right now. Without I, question. You know, Hawk's not back. I, I think they said they were going to try and work him he's in. Going back, back to practice. After, yeah. after the bye. Yeah, he's back in practice or whatever. But here's what I do know. Jets land in London. Vikings conquer London. <laughs> no. They conquer oh. and yeah, baby. Yeah, they're coming I like in it hot. that one. I like it. Um, speaking of uh, football, did anybody catch Kirk Cousins last night? Yeah, I got a little of Kirk. I just love him in that Falcons. I mean, listen. 509 yards yeah. passing. Yeah. 509 did yards. Did they end up winning that thing? They did. Okay, all right. In was, overtime. It was touch and go there for a little bit, but all right. Well, his his fourth touchdown of the night in overtime. All right. Like, hey, the guy can put up brilliant numbers. Uh, guess we'll... See him in the NFC Championship, huh? Oh, yeah, that would be great. Um, the the there's he does put up amazing numbers, and as I said, four touchdowns last night, 509 yards. Those are great numbers. There's also a big zero number with Kirk Cousins, which is you know titles, yeah, yeah. playoff wins. Playoff I don't know. Wins. I wonder if he has a play. I don't believe he had a playoff win in Minnesota. I'd have to have Google that. Was that there a one? Correctly. I think there was one. There was one. Okay, there might have been. Well, hold one. on. What, who, who was who was quarterback in the miracle uh, against the Saints? Was that pre Kirk Cousins? That was pre Kirk Cousins. Yeah, that was pre Kirk. So who was that? I'm I'm brain dead. Was it Case Keenum? Yeah, it was Case Keenum. Keenum. Right. Thank you, Roger. Case You're Ke- welcome. Boy. Case Keenum, Three a man, dorks a, here. A, a man that I believe, a man that I believe, Jerry All Jones. Grabbing our phones. Jerry Jones once said, "Case Keenum throws the most beautiful ball I've ever seen." <laughs> Jerry Jones, generally high. <laughs> Uh, anybody bring a book up to you know? Anybody bring a book to read? I did. I grabbed a book on the way out of the house, and What'd then of course I got here, and I'm like, why did I bring a book? Yeah, why did you bring a book? I don't know. I just for a minute there, I got confused <laughs> and thought we were going to the beach or something. <laughs> Kirk Cousins has won once in the playoffs in his career with the Vikes. And it just says in his career. All right. Mm, well. Good luck, Atlanta. Um, yeah, I about this book you brought. No, but 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 I, I did. Merriam-Webster has 200 new words in their dictionary, and one of those words is beach read. Well, it's two words, but a term. Yeah. Beach read. Yeah, they're running out of stuff. Uh, a usually dictionary. light work of escapist fiction. Yes, that <laughs> lightweight. Yeah, I thought that was just what you held up in front of your face while you watched chicks go by. It, it works in, in many ways. I yes. See, because my thing at the beach was usually I would I would pull out like a... Uh, a, an untranslated work of Dostoevsky in Russian. <laughs> well, of course. That I read. Or, but, you know, you just want to look like you're some, you know, yeah. something special. But it was well, upside down. Yeah, it was upside down. Yeah. I brought, I once brought an entire Encyclopedia Britannica to the beach and I lined them all up and then everybody was like, wow, look at that guy. Yeah. He's got, he's got, oh my God, the whole thing. And I was like, that's right. Yeah, I'm here to, so, I'm here to get some sun and some information. <laughs> Who says they're not mutually exclusive situations? You can tan and and you can learn a little. Of course. I guess. I've, I've heard about it. That's what they tell I me. I read about it in a book. This is also a new word in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, and I'm a fan of it. Badassery. Nice. I- all right, I think it takes the badass a little bit out of it. Doesn't it temper it a little bit? Badass, badassery. Just, the right. definition it works. I like it. The state or condition of being a badass. Mm-hmm. Blondie, badassery. Brings the badassery. Yeah. She cooked up a pot of coffee this morning. Instead of using water, she used vodka. Yeah. And then she did it again. That is badassery. <laughs> yeah, that, well, it's. Blondie, uh, uh, it is National Vodka Day. It is National Vodka Day. Today. Or as Blondie. Andy calls it Friday. <laughs> there they are. There's, yeah. There they are in the back row. Back of the bus. And I, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, mention, the, I, there was some leg wrestling. Leg, uh, or as I prefer yeah. to call it, wrestling. Yeah, this is the second annual. Blondie wanted the rematch. I don't know. The Thrilla in Manila, the uh, Badassery and Brainerd. The Badassery uh, and Brainerd. She brought the belt. You'll notice I have the belt. Uh, you know, with the belt on, she comes in at about 60 pounds. Right. My Red Wing boots weigh more than hers. So it okay. uh, wasn't difficult to get, but uh, next year... And I'll bring the belt. We'll let you go for number three. And we'll let you use both legs and bring a friend. How did that start? How would that come up? I, how does anything come <laughs> up with Blondie? It just, you know, it just, it, it happens. You right. know, it's like a, 
you know, comet out of nowhere, you know. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows how these things materialize. It's, you know. It's magic. Improvised lunacy. This is the final weekend for Anoka's social district for our friends in Anoka. Enjoy it. Get it while you can. Uh, yeah. We we uh, we here at the KQ Morning Show believe that should be a year-round experience. I think so. I mean, walking and drinking outside is, I mean, go out to any body of water. Right out here in Gull, when she freezes over, you'll see everybody walking around yeah. with their cocktails and their beers. That's right. Sitting on their bucket, waiting for a tip-up. Uh, but, so, yeah, it's just, it's natural to walk outside. It keeps your cocktail cold if you're the kind of person that drinks slow. It happens. Enjoy it, Anoka, while you have it. But we're happy to have you with us on the show this morning. Now, uh, we do have some sports and music history to get to. But, oh, that's right, also a local icon. Hang tight. Yeah. Hi, this is Ken Thomas from WJJY in Brainerd. And I'm making a cash call right now. Do you have any idea what our cash call jackpot is? Uh, no, I'm sorry I don't. Oh, would you care to take a guess at it? Your test call. It's a cash call. Oh, cost call? No, that's cash call. Oh, well. well there's, we have a certain amount of money in the jackpot, and if you guess the correct amount, then you win that amount. Well, uh, cutting wood. <laughs> that's what I was doing. <laughs> You don't want to take a guess at it, then? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> uh, let's see now. Uh, yes, oh. uh, gee, I, I uh, well, uh, just one word, or, or, uh... No, it would be a dollar amount. Oh, I see. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well... $17. How's that? Well, that's not quite right. Yeah. We had $463 in the jackpot. Oh, yeah. Would have liked to have given that to you. Well, that would have been pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, uh, Mr. Schaffel, thanks for being so nice anyway, and you yeah, have a good day, okay? I was outside uh, cutting wood. I heard the phone ring, and so I run. Oh, okay. And okay. uh, nobody else in. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you, then. Yeah, thank you, too. Bye-bye. Hello? Hello. Is this the Eno Corpy residence? Huh? Is this the Corpy residence? Yes. Hi, this is Ken Thomas at WJJY Radio in Brainerd, and we're playing Cash Call. Do you, uh, do you know our current cash call amount? Huh? Do you know what our current cash call dollar amount is? <laughs> Who is this? Oh, uh, you're not familiar with our program at all, are you? <laughs> no. Okay, well, I'll tell you what we've got here. This is a radio station in Brainerd, Minnesota, calling you. Oh. And we've got a jackpot where there's a dollar amount in the jackpot. And if you can guess the correct amounts, we'll give you that money. Oh. Now, I know you maybe haven't been listening. Maybe you'd like to just take a wild guess at it. <laughs> yeah, I've been to Fargo to the hospital. Oh, I see. Just got home last evening. Oh, well, I hope you're okay. Yeah, I'm okay. That's good. Yeah. Did you want to take a guess at our total or not? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and take a guess. Yeah. Anybody can come. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, uh, I'm sorry I disturbed you this morning. Huh? I said, uh, I'm sorry I disturbed you this morning. I yeah, hope you're I'm feeling okay. better. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks for talking. Yeah. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Hello. Hello, is this the Ernest Toluca residence? Yes. Hi, this is Ken Thomas at WJJY Radio in Brainerd, and we're playing Cash Call. Are you familiar with our contest? <laughs> well, I'm kind of, this is Grandma, I'm kind of hard hearing. Would you talk slower, please? Okay, uh, this is Ken Thomas at WJJY Radio in Brainerd, and we have a contest we call Cash Call. A, a chess call? Uh, cash Call. Huh? <laughs> it's called Cash Call. <laughs> oh, well, Ernie's not home right now. Ernie's not there right and now. And neither of them. This is just Grandma here alone. Oh, I see. Uh-huh. Okay. Could you call again sometime? We'll try back some other time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hi, this is Ken Thomas at WJJY Radio in Brainerd, Minnesota. We're playing Cash Call. Are you familiar with our contest? No, I ain't. Okay, we have a certain amount of money in the jackpot, and if you can guess the correct total, you'll win that amount. Make it guess. But they're a choppers. Pardon me? They're a choppers. A pair of choppers? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> 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 no. 
Okay. That's not it. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This is Ken Thomas calling from WJJY. We're playing a game we call Cash Call. Are you familiar with our contest? I'm not interested. You're not interested? No. What if I told you you can guess at a dollar amount, and if you hit the money, you win money just like that, and it doesn't cost you anything? You're gay. Pardon me? Are you gay? No. I'm sorry. It's... Hello? Connect with us on the KQ Talk and Text Line, 651-989-ROCK. That's 651-989-ROCK. 92 KQRS. Good morning. I am Deb from Baxter. You know, I hope our relationship is like a Minnesota goodbye, because I never want it to end. <laughs> no. KQ Morning Show live from Craigans. Yes, it is. Deb. Deb. Well done, Deb. <laughs> Very nicely done, Deb. This is the KQ Morning Show. We're wrapping up a hellacious morning at Craigans. It's been an absolute blast. Mm-hmm. And as we are you know, up Brainerd Way, we have to bring in the, the local icon. Shep is in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Shep. Well, I don't know about icon, but oh. thanks for inviting me. Now, what else would Shep say? Now, Shep, you were tell- we were just talking uh, BS in here a little bit uh, during the tunes there about how your summer went. You said a lot of rock festivals and every day on the lake. And how many cocktails does it take you to get around uh, the lake? From my place around my lake takes about two beers and at least one, maybe two tequilas. All right. That's a good <laughs> okay. trip. Right and I have, this, I have this goal. It's a pretty small lake. I want to just keep going around in a circle and enjoying my alcohol. And everybody look out the window and say, there they go again. <laughs> there they go again. And you, I think I succeeded. You joined the pontoon club finally. You yeah, got, I did. Uh, broke uh, down and yeah. got Like Chris Craft went bye-bye and I bought myself a pontoon. Attaboy, Attaboy. But I'm still not old. <laughs> no, heck no. Well, these <laughs> no. aren't our daddy's pontoons. These suckers go now. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah. Now, that's good living. Shep, I, I half expected you'd be in London this weekend. I'm glad you stayed around for us. I did. I got asked and a couple of my friends are going, but... I don't know. I was just having so much fun back at the bar watching Vice Game, and London's not on my list, I guess. So you yeah. like to home enjoying your alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a pretty good crowd at my bar every yeah, Sunday. Yeah. It's going to be sweet. This weekend's going to be fun, opening up at 8 o'clock in the morning. Nice. It's just unique. Yeah. You know, it's going to be so awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just reading. I mean, we met last year, uh, and I, I had a great – we all went down and had a great time, but I'm reading the story of this bar of yours and all the all the work that went into it and it's been I, I and for some reason in my mind I thought this was like eight ten years ago like, I didn't realize it was quite you've been there quite as long as you yeah have. it'll be uh, 29 years in Amazing. June so we've great. started 1996 yeah. so I was at, at the time I was working at the VFW I managed for 17 years which is just ironically right across the alley mm-hmm. <laughs> so I've been in this little quarter block for 45 years in the bar business it's fantastic and I retired May of 23, still work a couple shifts a week, but <laughs> it's nice not being up till 3 o'clock every morning, five days a week. I mean, I don't miss that a bit, but no. yeah, but I still want to keep my feet wet. I still want to get in there and see my friends and customers, and it's like all family to me, you know? Yeah, for sure. Chef's nice. on 6. All right, I'm looking at, I'm on your website here, uh, Chef's on 6.com, looking at the meat raffle. Um, you don't get, You guys don't do ground squirrel, do you? No. no. Right. You thinking that about was it? I had a meat raffle in Wisconsin one time. Really? Seriously, won a pound of ground squirrel. That right, wouldn't tell surprise me about me the coming pig from races, there. though. You don't just give away your top choice cuts of meat. I heard you guys got pig races. Well, we have what they call the video games, where they have the uh, horse yeah. racing, pig racing, and whatever. Yeah, and it's pretty exciting. You no got, actual pigs in the bar. No actual in the bar. No, just no the video part. There. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. And people get into that there, they're screaming at their pig, you know, come on, come on, come on, come on. You know, it's, yeah, it's pretty exciting. Sweet. Let's You've never witnessed it. you got to come down and try that. Right. It's Let's always talk. the first Wednesday of the month. All right. The Loyal Order of Elbow Club, <laughs> of which I am a proud member. Um, Lifetime, by the so way. So when you took over this joint, there was only a few dozen members, and now you've expanded a little bit, so right. to say. How many are you up to? <clears throat> so when I bought the bar in 96, there was uh, 48 of us members, including myself. Okay. Number 38. But anyway, um, I decided to run with the idea that give out membership cards, yeah. give yourself an album number, and so what it how basically I'll give you like a 30 second description, but you'll get a card, you'll get a number, and we ask between four to 10 people a day when you come in, what are you gonna have? And we'll come right back in and say, what's your album number? And once you're a member, you'll have a lifetime membership number, and you can either show me the card or just tell me your number. If you're correct, your drink is then free. 
We have a daily signing inside there every day. We draw one person. You win like a sweatshirt, a hat, a t-shirt, a pizza, just for coming in. Every yeah. day we do that. And the elbow really means is when you're inside Sheps and somebody says hello or goodbye, or you're saying goodbye or hello to a friend, no more waving, no more fist pumping, no more shaking hands. Single elbow, hello or goodbye, hence the elbow club. Right. And you can do right or left, but you can never, ever, ever, ever do two elbows. Never. Because if oh, you no. say goodbye like this, I can do it, you guys can't. You have to buy a round for the whole bar. Yeah. <laughs> and I highly encourage that and also highly enforce that. Right. And I've had one guy, I made him do it, $186 round. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah. yeah. He said he's never coming back, and he hasn't, but that's okay. <laughs> well, that, that's but we got to enforce it. We have people in charge called the Grand Elbow, and they can do that, and only the Grand Elbow can do that. Current and past Grand Elbow. So. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And it's, it's unique, quirky, but I didn't ask the question. 23,335 as of last night. Woo! Wow. Seriously. So, and what's fantastic. great about the whole deal is... We don't go around the bar. Are you a member? Are you a member? Are you a member? It's all people bringing in friends, coworkers, and family members, and that's how we got to 23,000. And it's crazy. I mean, I'm so proud of that number. Do you remember your number, Steve? Do I remember my number? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, uh, I, I don't can. either. No, no but I, I do have my card. It's in, you guys yeah, keep we got our cards. All that? We do. Yeah, right. we actually put it on a spreadsheet now at the bar. So if you come right. in and give you your name, I can punch it up now, and you can you can we can give you a number. What and if get I say, your new card if you have to. What if I say it. my name's Shep? I'm number thirty-eight. Um, they probably wouldn't give you that number thirty-eight. Right. They probably it. know who that is. <sighs> all right, I might. Be it's like the old saying. Oh, I know the owner too. You know. So everybody, everybody in Brainerd knows. Shep, but for anyone listening who's not, if you've not been, Shep's on Sixth is the bar in Brainerd. Uh, it's a it's a fine establishment, and there's a club there. And of course, for Vikings games, you could do a lot worse. Shep, it's good to see you, brother. Yeah, it's good seeing you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. yeah, we have a really, really big, huge display of memorabilia. I mean, a tremendous. It's, it's, amount. it's over a quarter million dollars worth of memorabilia. Yeah. And, and good thing now, memorabilia is coming back up again, so it's, it's all good. Yep. But yeah, come on in, take a look at everything we got. It's, it's pretty exciting. That's yeah. awesome. We'll be by for sure all right. over the weekend several times. Thank you, all brother. Right. We got to look back on this day. October the 4th, 2024, Shep stayed with us. But then on this day in 1873, in Toronto, Canada, the Toronto Argonauts Football Club was formed. 1873. This is the oldest existing professional sports team in North America that still uses its original name, the Argonauts. Let's talk about the CFL for a minute. For years, there were nine teams, and two of them were called the Rough Riders. <laughs> what is wrong with Canada? You had the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and the Ottawa Rough Riders. Yeah. How can who's you the, have nine teams and two of them have the same name? Who's the roughest rider of them all? I mean, yeah. But the funny thing is, if you would ask a Canadian, they'd go, well, it's not exactly the same because you see Ottawa's two words, rough and riders, whereas Saskatchewan's one word, rough riders. And then that's when you'd slap them. Oh, yeah. What do you expect from a country whose anthem is, oh, Canada? <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, sorry. Sorry. Sorry about that, rough riders. On this day in 1978, Eight, Tammy Wynette, country music legend, was abducted, beaten, and held in her car for two hours by a crazed lunatic, a man wearing a ski mask. He held a gun on her, forced her to drive all around Nashville, Tennessee, and then out. Way, they went, ended up 90 miles away from town. Uh, and at some point, she talked herself out of it. He released her, and then he just took off, and uh, he escaped. Got away with it. Now, now, knowing what we know about Tammy Wynette, the question is... Did it really happen? <laughs> Maybe a bit of a bender. Are you sure that wasn't just you and the possum getting into some yeah. hooch? <laughs> sounds like a, yeah, it sounds like a story I might have brought home to the old lady back in the day. What you don't understand. Was. I was abducted and held at gunpoint. <laughs> I don't know. He just kept giving me these little pills. And then, and every time I took another pill, I saw another man with a gun. God bless her. And by the time it ended, we was in a bus full of kidnappers. <laughs> On this day in 1975, Pink Floyd had the number one album in uh, the United States. States and the UK with Wish You Were Here. Uh, the album, of course, features Shine On You Crazy Diamond, a tribute to Sid Barrett, founder of the band who had left due to a, a lot of uh, mental illness and other things he was dealing with. One of the shots on the album cover, uh, if you, you can picture it, there's the two guys shaking hands and one of them's on fire, right? The Wish You Were Here album cover. 
two stuntmen were used. One guy was wearing a fire retardant suit that was covered by the business suit. And initially, as they were getting the shot ready, the wind blew in the wrong, unexpected direction. And the flames went up into the guy's face. It burned his mustache right off. Jeez, it was before Photoshop. It right. certainly was. And then so they said, hang on, let's switch it up. And they tended to his uh, recently burned face. And he's like, I'm okay. We can still do the shoot. I, I remember when they just went with a prism? You know, yeah, it's that, like, can we keep it a little simpler, fellas? We're getting um, stuntmen. It was, a, it, was a, it was a much less litigious time <laughs> right. in the 70s, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was. What happened to your mustache? Oh, I got it burned off <laughs> shooting a Pink Floyd record cover. Nah. <laughs> Not something I ever thought I'd hear somebody say. <laughs> On this day in 1970, we lost Janis Joplin. She was found dead at the Landmark Hotel in Hollywood. Accidental heroin overdose. Uh, me and Bobby McGee had been recorded but not yet released. She had a number one posthumous hit. She joined Otis Redding uh, as the two artists who went to number one after their death in that initial uh, burst of creativity in the late 60s and early 70s. Uh, Janice uh, has sold over 15 million records in the USA. Her streaming numbers are uh, still uh, uh, through the roof. Every generation comes around and goes... Oh, they don't make singers like that anymore. No, they sure ever. don't. Yeah, right. They definitely do not. And finally, on this day in 1961, Bob Dylan played a showcase gig at New York's Carnegie Hall. He wasn't in the main room. He was in a smaller side room called Chapter Hall. There were 52 people, sorry, 53 people in attendance. That's the gig that put him on the map for the record labels. Yeah. Columbia Records was like, I think we might have to talk to this kid. Tickets were $2. <laughs> I bet there were thousands of people who said they were there. I guarantee you. They were all, yeah, everybody that ever loved Dilla was like, well, I snuck into Carnegie Hall for two bucks. <laughs> no, you didn't. You absolutely did not. But uh, but that right around that time is when everybody was like, hey, that's that's our guy. Yeah. That, he's from here. Yeah, right. Uh, we, we, we couldn't get rid of him fast enough, but now that he's gone, we love that guy. <laughs> for the record, uh, saw Bob Dylan this summer at Somerset. And it was extraordinary. He, yeah. was, he was so animated and amped up. And we've all seen Bob when he's not on his game. And boy, he was fully on his game this summer. It was yeah. Great. Bob makes that choice, you know. He's always yes. had a bit of a cantankerous since he went electric and was getting some booze. I think there's always a bit of, well, he's just Dylan. That's who he is. But yeah, yeah when he wants to, it's good to hear that when he... He still wants to. He can still deliver. He absolutely can. Oh, Dignity is the song, to answer your question. Dignity? Yeah. What was the question? What song did I play on? Oh, Dignity. Dignity. Yeah. I like that. Oh, uh, you didn't ask? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just wanted to take a moment to mention that I'm on Dylan Record. <laughs> <laughs> then when did you lose yours? Uh, oh, come on. <laughs> that is your history lesson for the day. Yeah, I love it. And oh, hold on. Oh, yeah. I'm interrupting you, Zeb. No, you're not. I was just going to thank Hoffman Weber again one more time. I wanted to thank Hoffman Weber one I'd more like time. I'd like to Let's thank him. Let's all thank Hoffman Weber. Can we all thank Hoffman Weber? Hoffman Webber 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 Construction. Webber Construction. Throw it Man. Up for us. How Man. awesome is this? Buying the first couple of cocktails tonight on the big boat cruise. They certainly are. And thanks to Craigans for having us, as always. Yes. Absolutely. Well, we, it's important that we all have a great time here, and it's important that we not have such a great time that they don't let us come back. Remember that. <laughs> that's your that's your marching orders. Have a blast, but leave it kind of how you found it. Uh-huh. And then uh, I want to say, give a special thanks uh, to the crew here at KQ. We just sit down and talk. All these guys behind us make this possible, the setup and uh, dealing with so many logistics that none of us have the bandwidth or the intelligence to even begin to process. So thanks, everybody. Behind Thank the you, scenes. Thank you so much. Thank all you guys again for being here. Get the KQ Morning Show podcast wherever you listen. 92 KQRS.